Hi, I'm Whitney Espick, the CEO of the MIT Alumni Association, and I hope you enjoy this digital production created for alumni and friends like you. Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, everyone, depending on where in the world you're joining us from. Welcome to MIT Social Entrepreneurship Alumni Group's Webinar on Effective Mentorship. Today, our webinar is co-sponsored by the Miller Center for Social Entrepreneurship and by MIT SOC. Um, today we're going to be going over some, we have some great speakers and going over some very cool topics. I'm going to start by introducing MIT SIG, and then we're going to go over to um, Eliza Burke, who will be introducing MIT SOV and the speakers, and then followed by Mary Heather. Um, so I'll get started. We are organized under the MIT Alumni Association. Our mission is to build a community around MIT affiliates and friends that promotes and supports social entrepreneurship and impact investing to build a better world. Um, we have had a lot of really interesting and great webinars, both from an investor track and an entrepreneur track. We've been having about a webinar once a month. Um, we had two in February, two in March, and have had some uh, collaboration with other uh, organizations, including this one and we'll hopefully continue to be doing that in the future. If you'd like to be involved with MITC, you can join us through an infinite connection if you're an MIT alumni, or if you're not an MIT alumni, you're also welcome to join us on our LinkedIn group. Um, you can post any questions, uh, provide suggestions, try to connect and interact. And at the end of this webinar, if there are any questions that are not answered, you can also post them on our LinkedIn group and we'll do our best to try to answer them. So, for now, we'll go ahead and get started and I'll give it over to Eliza Burke, who's the Officer of Learning and Community at MIT SOC. Thanks, Juan. Okay. So, uh, as mentioned, I'm Eliza. I'm the Learning Officer at MIT SOC. And in my role, I work with ed tech entrepreneurs and cross-sector leaders to address global learning challenges. So for example, this year we are tackling uh, learning for girls and women. Um, also more relevant to this uh, webinar, I also lead SOLVE's mentorship program. Um, so a little bit about SOLVE. Uh, SOLVE is an initiative at MIT and we are based out of the president's office um, and we have a mission to solve world challenges. So, Essentially, we are a marketplace for social impact innovation. Uh, now, what does that actually mean? So through open innovation challenges, we find tech-based social entrepreneurs from around the world. Uh, applicants and applications go through a rigorous selection process whereby we'll source uh, you know, around 1,400 applications across four different challenges each year. And then we'll go through a process of selecting down to 32 teams to work with. So between September and May of each year, we work both with MIT's innovation ecosystem, our community of members and partners to fund and support these entrepreneurs and help them drive their impact um, and really uh, transformational change for them and their communities that they're working with. So our Solver Support Program um, includes, of course, funding from Solve, which I mentioned. We have prize funding opportunities through our partners, um, also capacity building support for the Solver teams. We make introductions across our community um, to hopefully work towards partnerships and then of course we have mentorship. So a little bit about the SOLVE mentorship program. So currently we match uh, members of our community who have specific expertise with solver teams who have sort of aligned uh, specific needs for their solution. We match our pool of mentors uh, based on that expertise, but also factors such as geography, what stage the innovation is at, what is the topical focus, um, is it focused on learning, early childhood development, um, and then likewise, what is the um, focus of the mentor. So mentors and solver teams work together 
over the following months on their agreed upon goals. And that brings me very nicely to um, introducing a uh, solve, solver team lead, Ram, as well as um, Dieter, who is a solve uh, member and mentor. But before I do that, I wanted to also just quickly mention that Solve has just launched, excuse me, I'm gonna cough. <laughs> Solve has just launched a, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, should be good. Solve has just launched a uh, fifth challenge this year actually on um, health security and pandemics. So in light of obviously COVID-19 and coronavirus, um, we decided to launch in addition to our four challenges, a fifth one. So if anyone's interested in getting involved there, please look at our website. Okay, so I'm delighted to introduce uh, Ram and Dieter. We're gonna talk more about their relationship and how they've worked together. So Ram is, <clears throat> Founder and CEO of Colaberry, which is a company that serves individuals from all backgrounds in pursuit of data driven careers, as well as enterprises in need of data talent. He's going to tell you a little bit more about his solution, Refactored, which was selected in 2018 for Solve's Work of the Future Challenge. Dieter is VP of Brand at Piaggio Fast Forward, which is a consumer electronics company and is a Solve member and mentor. He previously served as Transformation Catalyst at CAS Collective, which is a Boston-based design, innovation, and technology consulting collective. So, Ron and Dieter, I will hand it over to you two. Hello, thank you, Eliza. Hi, Dieter. Thank you. Are you gonna start, Ron? Uh, yeah, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. Oh, how do I press it? So uh, we are going to do like a presentation together. Uh, I had the opportunity to work with Dieter uh, after becoming a solver. So it has been like a really interesting experience. Uh, so uh, I'm the founder, like um, Eliza mentioned, I'm the founder and CEO of Colaberry. And our solution, tech solution refactored was selected as the most promising work of the future solution in 2018. Uh, so our story was uh, really about helping people who are on the other side of the track transition into good paying careers, uh, whether it is military veterans or people uh, who are historically disadvantaged uh, or people who are losing jobs because of automation. We want, we, our goal is to help them to uh, gain new skills uh, and, you, and new skills, both in tech skills as well as human skills, and help them transition into the good paying careers, primarily uh, in the data industry. And uh, what motivates us to do what we are doing is we set ourselves a vision that we want to pass on the American dream to 100,000 people. So when we are talking about uh, American dream, we primarily focus on moving people into uh, jobs that helps them get a career. So this is our uh, basic timeline. Uh, it's in 2011 is when we thought about it. It was, uh, uh, I wanted to hire a military veteran in my team as a way to give back to the country and I could not find anybody with the right skills. So we decided to start uh, training veterans and see if I can hire them. And that's how we started the company in 2012 called Colaberry. Um, and then uh, initially we trained about five people, ended up hiring three of them and two and two went and got jobs outside. 
uh, we all that uh, made us realize that there is a tremendous amount of need in the uh, society out there where people are looking for uh, skill development so that they can get into good paying jobs but at the same time it's a very uh, challenging uh, thing to do uh, with a huge uh, opportunity so uh, we in, you know, so we started like working on it and over the next few years uh, we developed a more of a bigger and mortar model uh, with uh, various uh, revenue streams in it and try to convert into a sustainable business model and then in 2016 uh, we as a we are a techie guy, so we started looking at how do we automate the work that we are doing so that we can scale. So that's where like the refactor platform came into the picture. You can kind of think about it as Amazon and Amazon Web Services. Amazon does email commerce business, and out of the work that they did, they launched the Amazon Web, Web Services as a tech platform. So we we took all of our work around like uh, tech and human skills training, especially for the people on the other side of the track, and we started converting that into a tech platform, primarily automating ourselves. And this year, uh, we are launching a marketplace, uh, which is ironically inspired by uh, Sol. So as part of our work, we were trying to see how we can help, uh, how we can work with other solvers and uh, provide them uh, data talent and data services, and uh, that inspired us to start working on the marketplace. So that's something we are launching this year. So our key revenue streams, we get revenue through training uh, in various ways, remote learning, self-learning, all kinds of things, and income share agreements and career services. Uh, and we focus on uh, moving people into careers in the data industry from data uh, entry to data scientists, everything in between. So the interesting thing about it is we've been, uh, we are growing and we've been bootstrapped to that. Uh, and Sol has changed that. So we are looking at raising uh, money. Uh, Dita, do you want to add anything before I get into it? Yeah. Um, maybe just like how I discovered MIT Solve and um... So I was look. I was at a stage in my life career where I wanted to give back to the community, and I found MIT Solve, and it was really the perfect um, opportunity for me to work with startups that needed um, help, and for me then also to work with those startups and give back. And so I was really happy that I found um, Refactor at that time because there were locally and being at my first mentorship that was just it seemed easier to me to work with a local um startup and so we were we were matched by mit solve and it was really i was really happy to get um to meet the team and work with the team at refactored uh, thank you Dieter. so uh before Sol, we were like really like uh, under the radar company uh, where we were just like technical guys, uh, engineers and data scientists, like basically sitting before our computers and trying to figure out how we just uh, work and like uh, build something that creates an impact. Uh, so, and uh, the Sol was like a very interesting eye opening for us. I think it was, uh, we were more at the right time um, and the market is getting disrupted. People are, the careers are shifting fast and people are changing uh, and people are losing jobs and they need a, a sustainable careers or like the mindset to move into it. So we, uh, the work that we did, we got like four awards. One is, uh, I mean, four recognitions. I would say one is like the MIT solver and other is we were one of the most popular solution at the time. The other one is we received a artificial intelligence for betterment of humanity prize. Um, and then we received an advanced technology usage for workforce development from GM. So having all these things at one point of time, it was like, okay, we needed to, we needed a makeover, right? So we needed to figure out how we just move from under the radar to above the radar. And the biggest challenge that we had at the time was branding and messaging. Uh, or the, uh, and going into the mentorship, uh, we, uh, the, we knew Dieter has the background with that. So uh, that was like initial expectation for us. And when going into it, we went with the open mind. 
uh, not knowing like really what to expect because that was like really first time where uh, as a company like we were trying to do that and obviously like i mean it was like a magical time for us being nominated as solver we thought okay some magic would come out of it right uh, and uh, my and uh, my thought process was uh, uh, i wanted to engage my team as part of the process not just myself as a uh, individual so there was like the initial expectation uh, from the mentor uh, from my mentor In my initial approach as mentor, I was really excited to meet the team, and my goal was to listen to their to their needs, really understand what they wanted to achieve during the mentorship. We decided to um, meet on a regular basis. It was more than what was expected by MIT Solve, but we thought with all the things that we wanted to achieve it would be best if we would meet on a regular basis once a week, actually. So we met every week for one hour at the refactored office. And my goal was to build on proven tools, or tools that I had used before that showed that promised to be successful also with the mentorship. And um, another goal was to really be a good sounding board for the team at refactored really to listen, reflect what, what they share with me and then give them feedback. So it was really, that was our initial playing field uh, where we started from. Yeah, so, and then overall assessment of the relationship. So I want to talk more from a project product development lifecycle standpoint. So typically there is this concept of form, norm, storm, perform, right? So that's the typical software teams work. Uh, in our case, it was like we formed, we normed, then we performed, then we stormed. Uh, and we got the results. So it was an interesting dynamic for us uh, and I'll, probably explain a little bit more um, uh, towards as, as we go through it. So there was like the, uh, my assessment of the relationship, we started, we came together and it was like a mentor mentor relationship. Probably we tried to behave like, like nicely and like try to work with it. And then after towards the end, we, we just like, we went at it. Right. And basically like, it was like we stormed a lot and then we kind of uh, gave the aha moments out of it and we got the results. Yeah, I mean, I also want to add like late in the process, once we knew each other, there were really some frustrating moments, but those were in the end the best moments. And we really, we got everything kind of frustrated because we sometimes didn't seem to connect, but that really, I mean, if you think about storytelling where you go to the cave, that's the best moment where you then have the biggest learning. So we went through that cycle of a story and, and we really, that helped us come to good, good outcomes. So the steps we, we um, used in the refracted mentorship program, I um, had them uh, fill out a hedgehog worksheet that's um, adopted from the Jim Collins book, Good or Great. We worked on the brand archetype, like as a brand, what archetype do they represent out of the 12 um, archetypes. We worked on the brand ethos, brand promise, the values, and we also revisited the existing vision, mission statement, and the basic purpose, the purpose of the organization. And then also because of the different entities in the organization, there was also a lot of discussion was around the organiza organizational structure that sometimes caused the biggest disagreements, but it, it also helped in the overall. Um, yeah, that, this just, is your access. I think that's also important to set from the beginning a timeline, what you want to achieve and what you want to have completed by when. So based on the MIT Solve um, events, we kind of set our goals for um, early in the spring and then also for the final goal being in May. So we had our clear each step of the mentorship to define when we want to achieve things that was really helpful. Yeah, I mean, having this timeline and schedule was like really, really helpful for us and uh, they have to like really appreciate Dieter for 
taking the time into like doing that and keeping us accountable. Um, so, and what did we get out of the mentorship? So, I mean, obviously like the, the outcome was uh, out of the various uh, uh, archetypes that are there. Uh, we, uh, we realized that our archetype is musician. So <laughs> in a way, so it, it, it was, uh, it was pretty uh interesting uh, thing to kind of get validation, even from the branding standpoint. We always thought that, okay, we, we change the world, we make things happen, we do the impossible things type of things, right? But it's also interesting to see like our language and our activities kind of uh, translate into the magician archetype. Um, and also, you know, it also gave us an opportunity uh, towards a path of like unified messaging, internal and external. Uh, when I say uh, internal, like the inter the thing about uh, us is we did not start with like this big plan of building a business. We we so and because of uh, we just uh, scrambled together, tried to figure out how do we uh, make it work, generate revenue, make sustainable type of things. So that there is a lot of uh, various functions and themes that kind of interrelated in my mind as the as the person who is leading the organization. Uh, it was easy for me to see how they connect. But within the teams, there was like a lot of uh, disconnect. And uh, so it basically it allowed us to create an internal uh, narrative and messaging to you know, bring the teams uh, together and work towards a unified uh, goal, which is still something we are working on, but it's, it gave us the path towards that. And from the external standpoint, it also gave us the a path towards okay how do we tell our story in the right fashion so it's uh, uh and how do we tell the story in a coherent fashion so that's that is something that i gave and obviously better team dynamics is like one big outcome it was uh, uh prior to the uh, prior to that people uh, the teams were working in silos and uh, uh and having this uh uh, multi uh, uh, the exercises of like making everybody uh, the team come and participate share their ideas and basically uh, openly discuss their agreements and disagreements has ended up creating a better team dynamics uh, so that people can appreciate uh, what uh, each other is doing and how it adds value to the company and really really briefly because you're short in time Ram mentioned that we have about the magician brain and that was really helpful in the overall positioning because um, the org brand archetype serves as a, a north star for the brand. Everything, the communication, the um, materials, everything can align on the brand archetype. Uh, you see, like the strengths behind the archetype, uh, weaknesses, an overall goal, and that's what we built then everything on. I think we're low on time around. So let's go to the next one. Yeah. So what is uh, what was the most valuable thing was, so prior to Saul, we were trying to say like no to many things or to just focus. And that also gave us like a tunnel vision, which is like good for us to get to a stage where uh, where we were. But uh, we needed to like move beyond, right? Think beyond and try to figure out like how to expand our thought process and how to. So that's uh, that was like the most valuable thing out of uh, uh, the session because we have somebody who is coming from a completely different perspective and like pushing the uh, boundaries. The other one was Dieter gave us like a whole bunch of assignments as we were going along. So that was like highly valuable and open brainstorming. So it was no holds barred, like in a way, it doesn't impact our business in any way if nothing comes out of it. Uh, so it, it allowed us to do a, a open brainstorming. So that was like really valuable. So for people to uh, discuss things and self-discovery and it's a self-discovery both as individuals, how uh, our team, is, uh, team individuals are contributing and as a company, like how we can align ourselves. So these are some of the valuable things. From the mentor point of view, again, I was acting as a sounding board. I gave them an external view, basically reflected what, I've, what, what I saw and gave them feedback. We had tough decisions that were really helpful and we challenged the status quo. And that sometimes you need somebody from outside to come in to challenge things, to give that external view and then really 
um, in stored changes. So uh, what could have been better? Um, <laughs> Obviously, the more meta time, right? But uh, we uh, we are very lucky uh, to have uh, Dieter, um, and he was super organized, and uh, he also helped us like organize better. Uh, what I realized is that uh, um, from our side, uh, as an as an entrepreneur, if I was able to involve the team better and keep the alignment. Uh, properly, maybe we would have moved that stopping phase from the end towards like a regular uh, farm, non stomp perform model. Uh, so, uh, and also what was happening, what happened was uh, there are the few, the limited number of people involved as part of the process. And then uh, we started like seeing the value. And then we started like bringing other teams into the meeting. They are disconnected from the previous one. So, if we could, if we could have like done it like an app, if if I if I had to do it better, probably we would be doing. Uh, we may we may not change much what we have done, how we do it, but basically I would have added like one more internal uh, messaging as part of like ongoing thing. Probably there's a core uh, team of people who are talking to uh, the mentor like Dieter, and then take the message and immediately disseminate to the entire team so that people are in the same. A page. So maybe I would be doing something like that if I have to do it again, so that there is like a better and inclusive team involvement. Um, so and then felt fluid, uh, better. Uh, so it's uh, um, in the sense, again, uh, I'm not we were doing something like this for the first time. And we were trying to like figure out like what happens. Uh, and uh, uh, we were not completely clear around like what the outcomes would be, uh, even though we were basically going with us, oh, a magic will happen. It's kind of like wishful thinking, right? Rather than like going into, okay, probably this is like some of the outcomes that uh, could be coming out of it. So uh, maybe if we are, uh, uh, maybe we could be structured better for better outcomes. But again, uh, what we got out of the entire mentor uh, mentor uh, uh, sessions with uh, Dieter is like way more than like what we bargained for. Sorry to interrupt, um, Ram and Dieter. I just wanted to let you guys know that we'll have to move on to um, the next pair, if that's okay. But thank you guys yeah. both so much. Thank you. Um, so now we're going to be moving on. I'll hand it over to Marie Holler from uh, the Miller Center at Santa Clara University to introduce herself and their program. Sure. Thanks so much. Uh, so I'm going to spend just a minute introducing Miller Center and then pass it over to the mentor mentee team that we have here who went through one of our programs because I think that they can describe what we do better than I could. Uh, so Miller Center is a center of distinction on the Santa Clara University campus, and we work externally with global entrepreneur, social entrepreneurs who are uh, to accelerate them. All of them are focused on uh, poverty alleviation uh, and climate change in some way. And all of our programs are run similarly. We run uh, between six to 10 a year at this point, uh, all cohort based for the most part. Uh, and each of our entrepreneurs that is accepted into the program is matched with two uh, executive level mentors, uh, usually with complementary skill sets to support them as they work through eight different curriculum modules that are focused on a holistic picture of their organization from impact model through business model, all the way through to understanding their growth plans and uh, how much money they may need to raise and what type. And so we really focus on moving them through that whole process, working alongside these mentors on weekly phone calls for an hour. And this, um, these weekly phone calls last anywhere from three months to six months to nine months, depending on the duration of the program that they're involved in. So this relationship really becomes kind of a deep trusted relationship uh, that uh, oftentimes some of our mentors end up being on board their board of advisors, 
um, and sort of lifelong connections for the entrepreneurs that go through our program. So with that, I will um, introduce the team that's here uh, today. So we have Fleur Backer. I hope I said that correctly, your last name, Fleur, um, who is here. She's the founder of Refugee Company, and she'll be telling you a bit more about that. And her mentor team, George Economy and Susan Eddins. Uh, and not to be confused, George is signed in under my uh, pre presenter link. So you'll see his name come up as Marie Haller as well, but he'll introduce himself in a moment. Um, so Fleur, do you wanna kick it off and I can share your slides and you can tell us a bit more about Refugee Company. Yes, thank you, Mary, for the nice introduction. Um, uh, so in 2015, I founded Refugee Company on a very simple idea. Um, let's put the skills and talents of refugees to work, literally. So a job is the best way to integrate, to get to know people, to feel valuable, to join in, to make money. Um, so I think over 200,000 refugees came into the Netherlands the last 10 years and only 10% managed to find work after three years. So our mission is moving refugees towards economic independence and second, the second line in our mission is increasing empathy in Dutch society. Um, maybe you can do the next slide, Mary. So this is our location. Uh, you see all the towers, 500 refugees are living in the towers and actually our, our place is just behind the towers. Um, you can show the next, uh, please, Mary. Yeah. So Refugee Company offers two main activities, a holistic personal enrichment program called Restart. And we run several businesses where we generate revenue to pay for the program. Our approach is holistic. At the end of the day, our goal is to have meaningful employment for our participants. Um, and our program always starts in one of the safe spaces of our social enterprise, a beautiful mess. Um, next slide. Um, so you can see it's a small social factory where we produce food, products, services, workshops, events. We offer refugees a safe haven, a place where they feel comfortable so they can be active again and build up a strong network and work experience. Our second location, can you do the next slide? Ah, this is still the first location and the other one, yeah. So our second location is a coffee bar in one of the shelters is where we build a community and recruit people for our restart program. In our safe spaces, we offer our restart program is existing of three modules. The first one is talent development. In this module, you work on one of our businesses. We support you with language and CV building. And if you're placed in a job, we keep following you for another two and a half years. The second module is network. Um, show us the next slide. Yeah, well, this is the location in the shelter. And the next, please. Um, so network is, is super important. We offer a buddy program excursions to companies and organize community dinners. And the third module supports people to become strong and healthy again. We do intervision, have a referral system for trauma healing and offer psychosocial support if needed. Uh, next, please. Yeah, some images and another one. Um, yeah, and the next. Um, yeah, and next. So, yeah, this is the last slide. Our, our restart program has been proven incredibly effective since our founding. 300 refugees participated in the program. Um, 166 of them are in a job, and more than 3,000 refugees are part of our community. To date, we have touched 80,000 lives, both refugees and Dutch natives, via our social enterprises as visitors or consumers, and we did public relation outreach. Our successful approach is already saving our society millions on welfare. And thanks to the Miller Institute and my mentors, I've managed to make a deal for three years with two more cities and to get the program completely funded by them for 1.4 million euro. And I'm super proud we are expanding our outreach this year, although the whole Corona crisis will 
um, for sure affect um, our work. So um, all our locations at the moment are closed because Netherlands, the Netherlands is in a completely yeah, lockdown at the moment. So uh, we're all working now digital, reaching out to our participants. So thank you. This was my three minutes. <laughs> Um, I am Susan Edens. I, my personal background is I have a career working in working for public companies as a product manager, and then senior executive in the field of genetic research. I have a deep background in product commercialization strategy and pro profit and loss management. Um, the reason I enjoy mentoring is that it uses my specialized skill set in my hope that the bottom line will become the norm and not a fringe investing opportunity or the way that companies are fundamentally run is based on bottom line. George, can you comment on why you're liking the mentoring and your background? Yes, hi, I'm George Economy. Um, I'm a former investment banker to technology companies who left the investment banking world in the mid 1980s and joined a group of MIT scientists um, who were involved in developing manned spaceflight experiments. One of the partners was a former astronaut. And I must say, I, I depended a lot on MIT Enterprise Forum to provide an outside perspective on running a business in my early days. And we, um, that coincided with the Challenger crash. So we had, we had many hardships, but I must say the MIT Enterprise Forum was a great source of uh, from advice and, and consolation for me. So uh, throughout my career, I've, I've owned a couple and started a few entrepreneurial companies. And throughout that period, mentors are very important to me. So when I sold the company uh, 12 years ago, I hooked up with the Miller Center and really enjoyed um, basically rolling up my sleeves and working with entrepreneurs. And that's why I, I continue this. this. So I, um, I think that's probably it for now. Um, moving on then, um, Floor, if you could kind of lead the next few questions, um, and then George and I will sort of comment in as, as we can. Um, what did you feel was the most valuable thing you got from the, from the members, mentorship, um, or just overall, what did you get out of mentorship? Well, um, it was much more than I expected. First of all, the, um, uh, the relation we built up throughout the months and weeks we had contact was, it, for me, it was always a moment in my week that I could really be open and uh, not be the strong um, leader of my, my pack of people. Uh, and I felt really supported. Um, but also the program of the Miller Institute was very structured and sometimes for me it was very hard to keep up with the homework um, pace because I also had to run a business. But it really helped me to go to certain steps and now almost, I think a year later I can really see why we did that and it, it's still supporting me on a daily basis I think. Great. Um, I wanted to chime in a little there that with all of the companies that I've mentored or all of the people, we're generally dealing with the CEO or founder. Um, usually they're both. Um, and I have found that we are, a, we are a safe space, if you will, for the, met, for the CEO to, to talk um, and to not have to be the leader. And because oftentimes, as the phrase goes, it's lonely at the top. And this gives them a chance to um, really talk to us and get as a sounding board, as well as working through the more structured program. George, did you have anything to add? Yeah, I think that that's the most important aspect of mentoring is developing this personal connection. Because unlike, um, you know, the nice thing is the mentors are there for the entrepreneurs. And so we have no interest in getting a consulting contract or anything. And so we can actually, be a sounding board for mentors or for mentees to bounce different um, ideas off of. And the one thing I want to mention though is it's really important as a mentor that we listen. We listen to the, the social entrepreneur and really don't impose our values or our views of what they should be doing and really listen to make the organization the most effective organization possible. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, that's... 
well said. Um, Fleur, does that chime anything yeah. else for you? It's nice that you say that, George, because sometimes you gave me some ideas. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, like you know, starting because we, we're um, trying to start. Um, yeah, George was very much a fan of starting our program also in company. So for instance, Philips has a factory and they are recruiting 50 people and we could do that with refugees. So this is still a pilot I'm working on with some, with a company. And th that was really George who inspired me to go into that direction. So sometimes you bring in your, uh, you. your opinion and it gives us also uh, yeah, new ideas. Great. Um, one of the things we do with the Miller Center program is the mentors do, um, as, as Marie said, it's a very structured program, or it can be, we have a lot of flexibility within that. But we do put um, pressure, if you will, on the mentees to, to, to bring, to fit within the program. So one of the things that we do is come up with a mission statement. We're pretty strict on that mission statement can't be more than 10 words. So if you think through the number of mission statements you've read, um, not very many of them are that short. So it really focuses the mentee on very much honing down to what their fundamental business is. So with that in mind, we thought we would um, put some discipline on ourselves and in five words or less, tell you what we got out of being, what we find the most valuable in the mentorship. Um, and Fleur, I'll let you start. Five words, right? So it's- <laughs> No um, more than five. <laughs> No more than five. Now, for me, the most important thing is, is trust, um, focus, and um, uh, yeah, th that needs more words, but growth. So how do you deal with that? And um, uh, learn from your failures, I think. It's more than five words, sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, George? Um. Um, what I like is, is to create a sustainable value chain for a more equitable and inclusive society. And, and Flores are, Flores are pushed to child for this. <laughs> yeah. Um, now I feel guilty. Mine's a little about me. Um, using my superpowers, if you will, for the greater good. So my <laughs> professional background. Ooh, I overwin five. <laughs> Very bad. <laughs> um, so Fleur, if you could spend a couple of minutes and talk about what were some of the challenges that arose. You, you mentioned a couple of in your previous, if you could just talk a little bit more about what, what help, you know, what challenges came up when you were working through the program. Um, now, I think um, because my business really uh, grew organically or it was not uh, a certain product I had in mind, it was just um, that I wanted to support these people and out of the working with the people, the ideas came for the businesses. I've never made like a business case before starting the business. And for me, it was sometimes a challenge to dive into all the numbers and to, um, yeah, to get rid of some of my, not principles, but maybe get it more focused into building a sustainable business. And I think that was the, the most challenging thing because I'm more a social work. I, I'm a combination of a social worker and an entrepreneur. So I think sometimes my social worker skills were stronger than my entrepreneurial skills. And I had to juggle with these two. And I think in the Miller um, program, I, it really gave me some strong entrepreneurial extra set of skills. So I'm able to run my business much better at the moment. I don't know if this is what you're looking for, Susan, but. I, I think it is. And like I said, you mentioned before that it was hard to do all of the work in addition to running a business. Yeah. Um, can you maybe mention a little bit more um, specifically other people that you pulled in or some of the parts of the program that you found the most challenging? Um, yeah, I think it got really interesting, especially for George when I when I was able to get my team of finance also working on the, on the program because then we could make um, yeah much more 
value in depth in, in also that the numbers were uh, right. But for, to me, that was sometimes um, difficult, yeah, to understand. But I, yeah, I've learned, I, I, I learned a lot out of it. George, did you have anything to throw in there? Um, Challenges? No. And I think I just in the interest of time, I think that it's well said. Yeah, um, we're okay on time. Um, so let's move on to tips for other mentors or mentees. We wanted to give well a little bit of advice on um, what we think was the most you know, above and beyond the specific program. What did we find that our mentee mentor relationships broadly? What was the function of of helping with that? Um, Floor, if you could take a couple minutes and comment on that. Um, yeah, so tips for mentees and mentors, right? Yes. Um, um, I think what is um, really important is to prepare yourself because um, I often realized that I had two super pro superpower <laughs> professionals um, spending an hour or two per week on my business. And that really, felt, yeah, it feels like a gift and it's very luxurious. So you, you need to value their time and be prepared before you go into a meeting. And to be honest, sometimes I couldn't. So then we had maybe a nice talk and they could really support me in, on an improvise. But when I was really well prepared, I got much more out of it. So I think preparation is really important. And um, yeah, um, uh, sometimes I felt pressured, uh, like I have to finish this now, but um, later on doing all these little steps add up into a bigger process. So following this process and not getting behind is really important in this program, I think. And to involve your team. Um, the moment I, I, in the beginning, I tried to involve my team, but then I didn't have the right team members. It was too abstract for them or too difficult. And then once I was building on a, on a new team I, and I had the right people in my team, I could get much more out of the program. I think the, these three are the most important things for me. Yeah. George, can you give a couple minutes on that topic? Yeah, when, um, I think building on what I said before about, remember it's the, the entrepreneur's own company. There, it's really important. I worked once with a with a very successful um, person who owned a small a small um, organization, and we found a way to scale it up to make ten different, you know, t ten similar organizations. And ultimately, it was just a beautiful business plan. But he didn't want to do it. And and I find that that we have to set back and say, well, what do you actually what do you want to do versus what do I think you should do. So the important thing as a mentor is really, I go back to humility. The other thing that I find interesting is throughout my career, I hooked up with mentors who were extremely wealthy individuals who never invested a penny in any of my businesses. And I never really, um, I never really asked them because I, I, and now I'm in a position where um, people often ask me for investments and mentorship. And I find it'd be interesting to hear what, you know, um, with Dieter's and, and Ram's experiences, but I find there's a level of trust that a mentor has that's very precious. And the moment one actually invests money in it, it might actually change that relationship. So it's it's an interesting um, dilemma, I guess. But it, it's, just, it's probably worthy of a whole other discussion. But th that's a, um, I think that's about it. The, the important thing is to walk the walk. I think the important thing with a mentor is I can't be there to solve Flora's problems. I can't be there. I can be there to listen, and I can be there to accompany her on her journey. And, and I think that's the most important thing: is, is being realizing that we're not there to solve problems; we're there to listen. Great. What about you, Susan? Um, yeah, I I find it very valuable that we're working on building them into a sustainable business. So we're not trying to, in working with Floor and working with others. Um, it's not just look at their business and try to help them work, you know, become a, um, a grant-based charity or a fundraising-based charity. We really focus on them becoming sustainable. So looking at how they can, in some cases, make a profit, in other cases, 
um, function as a successful nonprofit. So that's something that I feel is, is a really important part of the program and that I feel good about contributing to. Um, I really appreciate the breadth of the program. I think, um, and I believe the other speakers mentioned that they do similar in terms of we go all the way from the mission statement through their investor pitch. And as Marie mentioned, helping them figure out what kind of money maybe they should be looking for and who they might talk to, although we don't actually do the introduction. Well, we a little bit do the introductions, but we don't offer them funding individually. So it it lets us step back. And um, so getting back to the breadth of the program from mission statement through investor pitch, including operations and finance. So it's really looking at the entire business and helping them understand how to do strategic planning as well. Um, and I feel that that breadth is valuable and at the end of the day, um, I don't feel like we left anything out, even if we have um, unfortunately overwhelmed the mentee with the breadth of, it, of the program. And then another thing I found really valuable was that all three of us had very different skill sets and that allowed us to have a much richer um, ability to guide Fleur or even help some of Fleur's other executive staff um, as well as George and I could validate Floor's um, thinking and again, her team members coming from different backgrounds um, and we were able to play off each other. So I think it's important to have more than one mentor or at least a mentor with the mindset that they're gonna look at things from a couple of different viewpoints. Um, that's really all I had. George or, or Fleur, do you have anything else to add to the overall discussion or we'll hand it back to Marie to wrap us up? No, it's complete, I think, thank you. Thank you all. Um, I don't know, Juan, did you, um, and it looked like Ram maybe wanted to add in something maybe based on what George had, had prompted there a minute ago. I don't know if we wanna go into that side conversation or not, but we do have a few minutes left. So, sure. Yeah, we yeah. only um, we only have one question here, and I have a couple of more. But Ram, if you want to go ahead and add something, uh, please do, and then we can ask the questions afterwards. Yeah. Uh, for 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 me, going into solve mentorship was uh, really beneficial because, uh, like George was saying before, okay, there is no uh, as, as a mentor, they're not coming in to sell anything. Instead, they're coming in to actually look at what we are doing and uh, um, and and help us. That that uh, expectation kind of like opens up a lot. As an entrepreneur, I'm constantly hustling, right? So I'm basically constantly trying to make money, save money, right? So when when you're like, oh wow, this is a free resource, right? There is a free lunch here, so it's 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 a it's a fantastic thing. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, it, it, in a way, it's like definitely life-changing. All right, I will go ahead and this question is to the group. Um, Lisa asked, what should a mentee do to recruit a mentor and how can a mentee build a long-term relationship? And if anybody wants to jump in and try to answer that, go ahead. Uh, I can say something. I mean, I think what I find is, the mentors that I've found during my career just came through happenstance. Um, I, I sort of requested, I sort of requested, I, I threw out a, you know, a question to the air, to the universe, you know, can someone help me? And usually someone showed up. And it's really, um, in MIT actually was a great, it was a great resource for me. And one of, one of the examples is you can walk down a hallway of MIT and not find anything. But if you ask a question to MIT, you'll find the world's leading researcher on that subject. And I think with a mentor, I think the best thing is to reach out to everyone you know that you're looking for help. And whether you find, I mean, we've had a long-term relationship with Fleur. There's some people that the moment the course ends, I'm out of there because I haven't been able to connect personally with the, with the social entrepreneur. So I think the long-term relationship comes from a genuine desire by both parties to stay connected. Can I add something? Yes, um, yes please. Yeah. 
So uh, that's one of the things, if you would ask me what would you improve, then if there's some kind of an aftercare program, because I sometimes really miss my mentors. Um, so that this is maybe definitely something we should look into, like from a very intensive being together to, yeah, maybe a little bit more on a distance, but still following each other. And what is nice to, to do this presentation together, you see each other again and uh, share some of the thoughts. But I th do think this long-term relationship is super important because I feel that Susan and George really know my business and they've never visited it. We're very far away from each other, but it's, um, yeah, really worked like that. You're Great. on mute. And all right, let's see, I have another question. Let's, um, let's say somebody uh, has, um, as Susan mentioned, superpowers they wanna share and they don't know how to become a mentor, how to go become a mentor. Do you guys have any tips or I don't know if Mary and Lisa have any um, information on how people can get, can get involved with Miller or with Saul? Yeah, so, um... For Solve, <clears throat> we welcome anyone who's interested in potentially becoming a mentor to reach out to us. Um, and I don't know if it's possible, actually, I might just message out my email to everyone, but um, if you go on Solve's website, uh, we don't quite yet have the program listed publicly, but we'll have more information there um, in the coming weeks and months. And folks can reach out to us and they'll get directed to me and then we'll, we can talk about how to get involved. Yeah, uh, just a comment to add, I have been surprised as I've started to talk about being a mentor, how many other organizations I've met that offer similar services. So, you know, the wonder of an internet search, um, there's a lot of people who want to be mentors and want to be helpful. Um, so again, I've just been surprised at the number of opportunities or the number of organizations that offered mentors. You can also on platforms like LinkedIn share that you're open to mentorships because many people look there for mentors. That's also another option. Just share that you are willing to provide mentorship. Great. Awesome. And let's see. Do you guys have I, any? I was Sorry. just going to say, I just put the link to more information about mentoring with Miller Center in the chat. So if and, so for that. Oh. Perfect. And I will also post these, we'll also post these to the LinkedIn group for SIG and also email to all of the people who registered for the webinar, if that's okay. And we have one last minute, uh, hopefully a quick one, and especially right now with, when it's very difficult to have one-on-one -on -one, um, conversations. Do people have any tips on mentorship via digital communication? All of our programs are run remotely, so I don't know if Fleur, oh, Susan, or George want to share what they felt was most helpful to build a connection. Uh, I would quickly say video over okay. voice, definitely. And the idea that that is the mental mindset that this is how it's going to be. You are not going to meet the person. We can't. We're on different continents. Um, so up front, we know this is all we've got. So we have to make the best of it. I also want to say, um, in the turmoil that's happened in the stock market the last month, Zoom has been one of the few encouraging bright signs. And I think Zoom is just an incredible platform. When I think how I began mentoring, you know, 10 years ago, we were on Skype telephone. And so this is really a remarkable accomplishment. So I think yeah. Zoom is just a great, a great forum. Perfect. All right. Thank you all. Um, thank you very much for your time and everybody stay safe out there and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for joining us. And for more information on how to connect with the MIT Alumni Association, please visit our website.